Hello my perfume lovers, hello my beautiful people, welcome to my channel, I'm super happy that you're here, thanks for tuning in, I really appreciate that. If you're new here, my name is Martin and I do perfume reviews, so I talk about all types of fragrances, whether it's niche, Middle Eastern fragrances, designer, dupes, you name it, I'm here for that. And if this sounds like something you're into, then please consider subscribing, I would really appreciate that as well. So yeah, let's get started. Today I'm going to talk about a fragrance that are no, I couldn't really find a lot of reviews about that fragrance. So of course I was even more intrigued by it because usually I always go in for the fragrances that are not so overhyped or not talked about a lot. And of course it's another Middle Eastern fragrance, but um, not from Latafa, not from Al Haramein or any other famous brands I talk most of the time. This is a fragrance by Rayan Tradition. And I, I've never heard about that brand before, actually. And I really wanted to try that fragrance so bad because it's supposed to be very similar to one or actually two other fragrances. And I'm going to tell you in a minute. So here we have the fragrance. It's called Insurrection, number two. And allegedly there's also number one, but I don't know exactly about the number one. Here we have the bottle. It's a beautiful looking bottle. I think it's very sleek, very elegant. And it's very heavy as well. Also, the component is quite nice. What really matters is, of course, the scent and the atomizer. The atomizer is honestly okay. Nothing special, but the scent is just fantastic. I'm also going to spray it on my hand. So, this scent is supposed to be very similar to Pure Havan by Thierry Muglet. I haven't tried that fragrance, so I cannot really give you my thoughts on that. However, many people say that Pure Havana is supposed to be very similar to Naxos by Xerjov, and I have that fragrance in my collection. I love that fragrance. And, of course, it's kind of similar to this fragrance here. Before I actually talk about the notes and everything, I also wanted to show you the packaging. So, here we have it. It's quite nice. I think it's not over the top. It's very sleek. You can open it from the side, and inside then you have the fragrance. So... The scent, I mean, I love the opening. It's very strong, like right in the opening, you really get a strong whiff. And from the notes, you have cacao in here, you have styrax in here, you have honey, and you have tobacco, of course. And from the notes, you can definitely say and tell that this is supposed to be a dupe or very similar to Naxos by Sergio. I don't have the fragrance here with me because I know the fragrance already. I've tested it, worn it a lot of times, actually. And I'm planning to get a backup bottle as well. So I did a side-by-side -side comparison actually before. But here I actually want to focus more on that scent. And right in the opening you definitely get tobacco. You get the honey and of course the lavender. I think the lavender adds the perfect freshness to it. Whereas the honey adds the sweetness and tobacco makes it very smoky you know a little bit green but really not green it's more like on a smoky side very sweet i feel like that um dna or in general that scent has a very oriental vibe and i love that and right in the opening actually it reminds me a lot of naxos i would say it's like 80 to 85 percent resembling naxos however it doesn't have that creaminess and that complexity of course i think naxos is a fragrance that's very hard to dupe because the DNA or actually the scent is very complex, you know, it's very well blended, it's nearly perfect. And I think you can say that by actually when you smell the fragrance that you barely can tell the notes, you know. I mean, of course, if you're into fragrances, you have a very well trained nose, then you can tell, you know, what there is inside. However, when it comes to this fragrance, of course, the first thing, I would say it's not as complex and deep. However, it is deep in a sense where it's like darker from the from the scent, from the smell, because you have the cacao in here, and you do get the cacao, but not in the opening, you get it later on, you know, like after one hour, when it really sits on your skin, you get a slight chocolatey feel, but it's very like, not sweet chocolate, it's like a bitter chocolate, there's something about the fragrance that's kind of bitter, but I really like it, and I think it complements the sweetness of the honey, and of course the tobacco adds that how can I say, smokiness, and I think that the scent is very masculine. I think a woman can wear this one as well, but in my opinion, it's more masculine leaning, and I see this fragrance on a man, but you know, you're always good to go. I don't care about that. I don't like to like put a gender, especially when it comes to fragrances. It's all about preferences at the end of the day, 
and you also have Styrax in here and Labdanum and I think this makes it kind of dark as well. I think this is actually what adds the darkness as well. Um, it's very hard to describe, you know. Um, there are not many fragrances I've tried that have Labdanum in there or Styrax. Uh, as far as I know, Ombre Nomad has um, Labdanum in the fragrance. And, but yeah, that's a different topic actually. When it comes to the scent, what you really most of the time are going to get is the cacao, definitely the honey and the tobacco and of course the lavender right in your opening. I think this is like the main character and then it switches to different notes where like every note has the options to shine. I feel like with every half an hour, an hour, you get a different note, a different whiff and I like that a lot. It's not a very linear fragrance. But I also think it's also depending on your skin, you know, and when you wear it, the climate really also plays a big role. So to sum it up, I think it's a very, when you th like think of sweet honey poured on lavender and then you have like powdered cacao on top. This is what you're going to get. And it's like someone is smoking tobacco like a cigar, but it's not very, very intense. It's more like in the background. And which I really like about the fragrance is that, of course, it's very well blended. Um, they're like tobacco scents that are very, very heavy. For example, if you have tobacco vanilla, if you try the one that's this is like a spicy tobacco bomb. This one, on the other hand, I think is kind of fresher, sweeter, of course, and very easy to wear. And I think this is a compliment magnet because Naxos is actually one of my most complex fragrances. I feel the same with this one here. I've only worn it twice, but I got compliments. So if you're looking for a compliment getter, go for this one. And as well, if you're looking for a dupe, then go for this one. Because if you don't want to pay like over 200 euro, I paid like 250 for Nexus and it's nearly impossible to find that fragrance for less than that. Then of course, go for this one here. I paid 25 euros, around 25 euros. And as far as I know, you can also get this one on Amazon. <clears throat> so I don't want to gatekeep it. I want to like tell you guys if you if you want to go for it, go for it definitely. I don't think you're going to regret it. What also plays a big role, and this is where it kind of gets tricky, is of course the longevity. Because if you know Naxos and you know that this is a beastmal fragrance, it's actually one of the most long-lasting fragrances I've ever tested and worn, and it's projecting a lot. It leaves an like amazing sillage without being overwhelming and this is not very easy because beastmal fragrances tend to be as well very overwhelming whereas Nexus I feel like is a fragrance you have like around you and it's very intoxicating and everyone that smells it really cannot get enough of it I think this is the type of fragrance you can wear all around the year and you're not gonna get tired of that and I feel the same about that fragrance except that it's not as long lasting as Nexus I mean this would have been like perfect because if it comes to longevity and if it's, I would say, like a beast mode as well, I probably would have just repurchased, keep on repurchasing this one here. However, I will have to say you get around five to six hours if you over spray. And I think that five to six hours are completely okay if you actually consider that this is not an Ude Puff Bites, it's an Ude Toilet. So this was like a thing I wasn't sure about. I mean, at least I wanted to test it and I wanted to tell you my thoughts. But I would have been very disappointed if it just performed like for two, three hours and then it just completely vanishes. But I feel like if you go overboard, as I usually do, and when I say overboard, like around 10 sprayers, then you're good to go. People are going to give you compliments. People will smell you. You're going to leave an impression, which I think is very important when you wear fragrances. I mean, the impression part, like compliments is something else. And when it comes to sillage and projection, I would say you get around one meter, like, arm length around you people are gonna smell you but it's not like when you enter the room everyone is gonna like smell you and it projects for around two hours i think which is okay totally fine with me i think there are like uh, fragrances up in my collection that perform less than that and i'm still satisfied with that with the result in general and this is actually it i said everything i wanted to say um again this is as far as i know unisex just like nexus is a unisex fragrance I personally see this one more on a man. I think this is an amazing signature scent and of course an amazing date night scent. If you're going on a date and you wear Naxos, you're sure gonna get late, if you know what I mean. Um, and yes, so I really, really like this one a lot. I don't wanna like overhype it because 
as I already said, it's not like the whole checklist. You, as I said, it's uh, of course very well blended. It smells amazing, but it's not the most long lasting fragrance. However, as I said, for an eau de toilette, it does an amazing job. And I think that if you overspray, you're definitely not gonna go wrong with this one here. And it's only 20, like three or four euros. I think it's an amazing price because I remember I watched a few reviews that are a little bit older and the prices like went super up and this fragrance was like around 70 or 80 euro. But I checked the prices in different sites. I found this fragrance for like 24, 25 euros. I think this is totally fine and you're gonna love it. I sure love this one. I love Naxos in general. And usually what I do, I like go three, four sprays with Naxos and then just go overall with this one. I take this one with me so I can respray if I feel like it and I'm good to go for the whole day. So yes, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thanks again for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Tell me your thoughts and I would love to see you soon for another review. I hope and looking forward to do another review very soon as well. So yes, thank you.